Hi, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to present our work on the optimization and assessment of Brazilian CO2 value chains via carbon capture and storage. This is a joint effort between two groups at ETH Zurich within the Institute of Energy and Process Engineering, specifically the Reliability and Risk Engineering Group and the Separation Processes Laboratory. First, a couple of words on the scope and an overview of the work. The scope is to design an optimal carbon capture and storage CCS value chain to decarbonize hard to abate industrial sectors in general, and we focus on the Swiss waste to energy sector. And the meaning of optimal will be clearer in a second. To do this, um, we formulate and solve a multi-objective optimization problem to determine the optimal structure of the CCS value chain in terms of capture, transport, and storage technologies according to economic, environmental, and security criteria, uh, which define, in a way, such criteria define the optimal interpostable. And while doing this, we try to answer research questions such as what is the optimal evolution of CCS value chains from today to 2050? And what are the trade-offs between the different optimization criteria? And the focus of this presentation today is the cost optimal versus resilient value chains for the Swiss Swiss energy sector. According to this, the agenda is the following. We start by describing the system that we are looking at, by formulating the optimization problem, uh, by providing some of the results of the optimization in terms of cost optimal CCS value chains first, and then trade off between cost optimal and resilient CCS value chains in a second model. First, system description and formulation of the optimization problem. Um, the system that we are looking at is the Swiss waste energy sector that we want to carbonize. The Swiss waste energy sector consists of 30 plants for a total of 4.2 million tons of CO2 per year, of which 50% is biogenic. And we are reporting the location and sizes of the waste energy plants across this waste map here. We also have two potential CO2 storage sites, one in the North Sea, for example, the Northern Lights project, which we assume becomes operational from 2025 here, and another one in Switzerland, which we assume becomes operational in 2040 here. And we also consider one reference CO2 emission scenario um, where CO2 emissions decrease linearly from the current value of 4.2 million tons of CO2 per year to the minimum emissions um, at the end of the time horizon in 2050. These minimum emissions are characterized by capturing all the CO2 that we can according to state-of-the-art capture technologies, and, and also they would need to consider the CO2 emitted by the CCS value chains itself that we are designing. So this is the system that we are looking at, and then we are formulating the optimization problem. And specifically, we formulate a mixed integer linear program, MILP, which is a class of optimization problems where we are optimizing, determining the optimal value of both continuous and binary variables. In general, it can be integer variables, we have continuous and binary variables to um, model the nonlinearities arising due to the cost of the different technologies or to the selection, the presence of the different technologies being um, captured, transport, and storage technologies. And what I would like to do is to present the different aspects of this optimization problem, starting from the input data, which are essentially a set of parameters that we have no control over. We accept them and we, uh, they represent the boundary conditions of the optimization problem. And in our case, they are the amount and location of CO2 sources, which are the waste energy plants in Switzerland, the capacity and location of the CO2 storage sites, which are the Swiss storage site and the North Sea storage site, the CO2 emission scenario that we defined before, and the parameters and conditions for capture, transport, and storage technology. For example, we can have different conditions depending on the mode of transportation, structs, or pipeline that we select. We start from this input data, we want to define the optimal value of decision variables, which are the handles of our optimization problems so of what we can define in our system. And these are the size and the location of CO2 capture units, the size, location, and type of CO2 transport connection, and the energy required for CO2 conditioning for example, for um, liquefying and compressed CO2. Um, we do this by being subject to constraints that we have to comply with. So um, in our case, these are the CO2 mass balance and electricity and heat energy balances and the performance of the different capture, transport and storage technologies, how, they, how these technologies actually behave. And again, we do all this, so we take this input data, we optimize the decision variables being subject to constraints to optimize some objective function. We have several objective functions, actually. Therefore, we have a multi-objective optimization that we address through an epsilon constraint method. And what we, what we want to do is to look at the minimum emissions 
of our value chains, the minimum cost at constrained emissions and the maximum resilience at constrained emissions. So this is how we formulate the optimization problem. And now we would like to provide some results in terms of cost optimal emissions constraints value chains from 2025 to 2050. So we look at the evolution of these cost optimal value chains, again, over the time horizon 2025, 2015, on a plane which is given by costs on the y-axis. And this stands for levelized cost of avoided carbon, and we are defining it in a second, and emissions on the x-axis. And you are having the net CO2 stored um, given as a fraction of the total emissions, and it is net because it is at the net of the CO2 emitted by the CCS value chains. Um, so as a first thing, I would like to better define this cost metric, which is the levelized cost of avoided carbon, LCAC, which is the total cost of the CCS value chain, uh, considering the capital, operation, and maintenance contributions, per unit carbon emissions avoided, which is given by the difference between the business as usual emission, emissions and the emissions of the CCS value chains. And both costs and the numerator and the emissions and the denominator are discounted as a function of time. And now we would like to see a bit better the optimal structure of um, this of cost optimal CCS value chain. And we start from 2030. In 2030, what we have is that we have 11 waste to energy plants, which are capturing the CO2. They are connected via a pipeline network. The CO2 is transported to Basel, then transported to Rotterdam, and then shipped to the North Sea storage site. In this case, we have um, a cost, a levelized cost of the value chain of about 230 euro per ton of CO2. And the major contribution, about 70%, is given by the transport cost because we need to bring CO2 from Switzerland to the North Sea. One thing we can notice is that we have old pipelines in Switzerland starting already in 2030, and actually already before, if we, if we, if we look at this. And the reason why we have it is that we are running a multi-year optimization where the tool, the planning tool, is aware of the fact that it will have to capture a greater amount of CO2, capture, transport, and store a greater amount of CO2 in the future, and, that, and therefore, it installs pipeline right away. And if, for example, within a single year optimization, we would install trucks and rails, um, which are, let's say, cheaper and more flexible solutions will come into a smaller amount of CO2 transported, but then are less fit to transport a greater amount of CO2, as in this case. And therefore, we install directly pipelines. Um, if we go then to 2040, um, we notice, the first thing that we notice is a drop in the levelized cost of the avoided carbon. And this is because 2040 is the year in which, in which the Swiss storage site becomes operational. And therefore, we can avoid bringing the CO2 up to, to the North Sea and delivering it directly to Switzerland. In this case, we have 22 waste to energy plants which are capturing the CO2. They are connected by a, um, a pipeline network and the total cost, the levelized cost is about 100 euro per ton of CO2. And in this case, the major contribution is not given by the transport cost anymore, but by the capture cost. Because we are just transporting the CO2 for a much shorter pathway, essentially. And one thing that we notice here, um, is that related also to the network before. So this upper part of the network from Rotterdam to the North Sea is non-operational anymore. And this is the reason why, in the first place, um, the planning tool decided to um, install a ship rather than a pipeline. Because it knew already, essentially, that a closer and, most con and more convenient storage site would become operational at a certain point, and therefore decided to install a more flexible way of mode of transport with respect to the pipeline, um, because at a certain point, that would become non-operational. And therefore, we installed the ship there, which is now non-operational. If we then go to 2050, uh, the situation doesn't change too much. Now, all the 30 waste energy plants are actually capturing the CO2 for a localized cost of about 85 euro per ton. The capture cost is still the major contribution. And another thing that we can see for 2050, but in general across the time horizon, is that due to the to the fact that we have 50% of biogenic source of waste and therefore of CO2, we can actually get net negative emissions when capturing the CO2 and permanently store it, in this case in Switzerland before in the North Sea. So this is like this is it for the evolution of the cost optimal CCS value chain. And now we would like to transition to the trade-off between the cost optimal and resilient CCS value chain. 
And to consider this trade-off, we are looking at a resilience matrix on the y-axis here that um, I'm introducing in a second, and the cost matrix still the realized cost avoided carbon on the x-axis. Um, now, I'm not presenting all the equations necessary to actually define the resilience um, matrix, but I'm happy to, to share it. So please, if you're interested, get in touch. Here, I'm just presenting the, the most relevant ones. And our entire resilience analysis is based on this concept of expected carbon not stored, ECNS, which is the expected difference in the amount of carbon stored, U, here, um, between the system with failure, so under a given failure scenarios with a given probability, and without failure. Once we define this ECNS, we are using it to define a resilience matrix under K simultaneous failures, this RK, which is defined in this way. And it's essentially a quantity equal to zero when the value chain is as or less resilient than the cost optimum value chain, and equal to one when the value chain is resilient to all events involving at most k failures. Um, which means here we are considering R1, for example, which means that we have a value chain which is resilient to um, at most one failure at a time. If we have one failure at a time, the value chain is still able to store the CO2, to deliver the CO2 to the storage site and store it. And to illustrate this trade-off between the cost optimal and resilient value chain, we are looking at, at first to start with at a simpler network with only four nodes here in Switzerland. Um, and also we consider one mode of transport at a time. We start from pipeline, then pipeline rail, and then all, all modes of transport. And the first thing that we see is that if we consider the cost optimal solution, um, that's the same for all modes of transport, meaning that it's entirely based on pipeline. Similarly, not really as in the, for the full metro, because we had a shift before, but similar to what happened to the, to the full metro, we are entirely based on pipeline here. And if we consider only pipeline, so if we are moving across this line here, this parameter here, and we want to increase resilience, we can do it. We can achieve a resilience of about 5% with a 4%, for example, cost increase um, by having these redundant connections. This cost increase becomes 23% if we want to have an almost fully resilient network. And this 23% becomes 21% if we can actually install a rail connection here, and 18% if we can install a ship connection here, having all modes of transportation available. So the first thing that we notice is that, in general, having more modes of transportation is an asset for resilience, and it improves the trade-off between cost optimal and resilience. Now, if we are sort of repeating this exercise that now we are going for a simple network on the actual waste-to-energy sector, we obtain the resilience CCS value chains for this waste-to-energy sector. And here I'm reporting the results for 2030 and 2050. Um, and essentially what we notice is that in both cases, so a secondary truck and ship networks stand out as the most cost-effective contingency solutions, which means that we have trucks with some rail, but mostly trucks um, in Switzerland and ships from Rotterdam to the North Sea as a backup solutions um, for supporting the pipeline network, which is the, the, the major one, the, the first one, the cost optimal one. Um, and also in this case, full resilience is achieved with a cost increase of 35% in 2030 and 15% in 2050 with respect to the cost optimal solution. So this leads me to, to the conclusions. And for the cost optimal network, um, pipelines are the principal technology of the cost optimal CCS value chain. So the, the network is, an, is essentially based on that. In a CCS value chain where sources are in Switzerland and the storage site is in the North Sea, the transport operation cost drives up the unit price, the unit cost of CO2. Um, whereas if the storage site is within Switzerland, it's co-located with the capture site, then that becomes the capture cost, which is the most relevant contribution. For the Swiss waste energy sector, 85% of the CO2 emissions can be stored. And assuming a linear decrease in emissions, as we did, um, we obtain a net zero emissions in 2038 and then negative emissions afterwards. Concerning the resilient network, we found that the adoption of several modes of transport is an asset for resilient and improve the trade-off between cost optimal and resilient value chains. A secondary track network is the most cost-effective solution in Switzerland, whereas ships are used as a backup from Rotterdam to the North Sea when um, operating it. 
And the cost of resilience is about 35% when the storage site is in the North Sea and about 15% when the storage, when the storage site is in Switzerland, let's say when it's co-located with the silt shores. So uh, this concludes the presentation. I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any question, of course, get in touch or see you virtually at the conference. Bye.